The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Located in the heart of New Mexico's Rio Grande Valley is one of my favorite public parks in all the Southwest, the Rio Grande Botanic Garden. Just minutes from downtown Albuquerque, this garden sports a superb collection of drought tolerant plants. Most are suited for the southern deserts of our region, specifically the Chihuahuan and Sonoran deserts. But drought tolerant does not necessarily mean brown and drab. Desert Collections gardener Catherine Anetta describes plants adapted for the xeriscape. One of the very colorful plants people can consider is the buddleia. The buddleia. It's a nice low water shrub. It comes in various forms. You have your upright variety, dark purples mm -hmm. to lavenders. And then you've got this one that we see here, this arching, flowering all along the stem, very beautiful, fragrant. Yes. And you've got red buds, of all things, a red bud tree. Red bud, and one of the nicest is probably the Texas red bud. Very mm -hmm. waxy thick leaf with a cerise colored bloom that will just knock you out in the springtime. And it likes the temperatures and the conditions. It grows well? It grows very well here. And then, oh, mesquite. Mesquite, mm -hmm. very nice. We have a number of different varieties. And there are some that are more weedy, mm -hmm. some which are actually a nice ornamental tree. The screw bean mesquite. Is, is very nice. Uh -huh. And nice flowers, nice fragrant flowers. Nice fragrance. And the Mexican elder? The Mexican elder. Yeah. It tends to scorch out in the summer, but it starts greening up early and flowers early, and so it fits into the landscape very well. It does. It and you can trim it so that it has a gnarly appearance, mm -hmm. or you can let it just stay in its natural form. It fits in the landscape extremely well, it makes a small shade tree, it shades patio areas. It's a good plant to have. In arid climates, cacti like this claret cup cactus make good additions to the landscape. Very beautiful. You have all your opuntias. The prickly pears. The prickly pears. And one nice thing is you can take the tunas and make jellies and jams from them. And we even have the choya cactus. It's a close relative of prickly pear. In landscape situation, it can take up a lot of space, but it's easy to grow without irrigation. And so there's a wide variety of cacti we can use. They're not the only thing you can grow in a xeriscape. Oh, no. But they certainly do have a place there. Yuccas, which are succulents, not cacti, can be an accent to the landscape. Palm yuccas do better in warmer regions of the southwest. Yucca thompsoniana, with its narrower leaves, does a little better in cooler areas. The agave, which is similar to the yucca, is also easy to grow with little irrigation in southwestern landscapes. Although it's called a century plant, it can mature and flower in 20 years or less, depending on the species. And it's a nice plant, sharp points. You don't want to put it next to a sidewalk, but it's a good plant and looks like it belongs in the desert. Yes. Okay, and you've also got Ocotilla. That's another one that'll bite you. That is. Um long slender stalk with lots of spines on it and the interesting thing is it is leafless until after it rains and then it leaves out it leaves out and it blooms at the top bright orange it, blooms yeah you know, it looks like a dead stick with beautiful blooms it does cacti and succulents can add interest to a xeriscape the preceding was a production of new mexico state university the views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.